Distinguished future physicians, welcome to Stop on Step 1, the only free video series that helps you study more efficiently by focusing on the highest yield material. I'm Brian McDaniel, and I will be your guide on this journey through personality disorders. This is the sixth video in my playlist covering psychiatry, and we are going to review the major types of personality disorder and use famous examples from history and TV to help us illustrate the concepts. Personality disorders are rigid ways of thinking and behaving that differ greatly from the norm, cause distress, and hinder function. These individuals don't think they have a disorder, so they rarely seek out help and have low compliance with suggested therapy. This lack of insight is why diagnosing and treating these disorders is very difficult. These disorders develop early in life and primarily affect a person's relationships. We can all identify somewhat with some of these disorders, but don't go diagnosing yourself or your friends. Having a disorder is much more extreme than having mild characteristics of these disorders. There's a big difference between personality traits, which everyone has, and a personality disorder, which is much more severe and hinders function. In most books, you will see these disorders grouped together in groups called Cluster A, Cluster B, and Cluster C. However, I won't use these clusters in my materials because I don't find the groupings that helpful and you will never be asked what cluster a patient is in on step one. Before we get started, I do wanna add a disclaimer. I believe the best way to memorize these disorders are by using celebrities, historical figures, and TV or movie characters as examples. However, I wanna stress that I'm not trying to make light of or make fun of these conditions, which can be debilitating for people who have them. I'm just trying to help people memorize these things better and to make this content a little more interesting. And when I mention real people, I do so completely based on speculation and have no actual knowledge of how these people are in real life. I should also mention that these are not perfect examples, as there are very rarely people who perfectly fit the diagnosis, but these famous examples should help clarify the concepts. If you can think of any other good examples, please comment below. We will start with schizoid personality disorder, which you can see here I give a high yield rating of five. That is a rating scale from zero to 10, which gives you an estimate for how important each topic is for the USMLE step one medical board exam. It is based on a number of factors, including how often that topic appears in retired step one questions. People with schizoid personality disorder are super introverted, they have no desire to have friends and voluntarily choose to be socially isolated. These individuals may also be uninterested in sexual contact with others. They often daydream a lot, have a limited range of emotion, and are largely apathetic. Examples include Squidward from SpongeBob SquarePants and Dexter Morgan from the show Dexter. Obviously, this is not a picture of Squidward, but I'm very limited by copyrights, so this is the best I could do. In the show, he hates both of his neighbors and prefers to be alone. In Dexter, especially in the earlier seasons, he has no interest in human connection or sex. Of course, with Dexter, I'm talking about his personality and not his serial killing. People with schizotypal personality disorder are extremely nerdy and awkward. Magical thinking, such as paranormal or superstitious beliefs, is common. They often have odd speech, dress, and mannerisms. They usually have voluntary social withdrawal similar to people with schizoid. So you can think of schizotypal as schizoid plus magical thinking and odd behavior. Good examples are Kramer from Seinfeld, Doc Brown from Back to the Future, and the characters on The Big Bang Theory. People with paranoid personality disorder are almost always suspicious of others' motives and don't trust other people. They feel like everyone is out to get them and get aggravated about minor things. Paranoid personalities should not be confused with paranoid delusions in disorders like schizophrenia. The complaints for somebody with paranoid personality disorder are at least plausible. For example, my wife is cheating on me is something you might see in paranoid personality disorder, while aliens are out to get me is more characteristics of psychosis. Paranoid personality is like a distortion of reality, while paranoid delusions are almost entirely disconnected from reality. Some of the best examples are dictators. Psychologists have speculated that Richard Nixon, Adolf Hitler, Joseph Stalin, and Saddam Hussein may have had paranoid personality disorder, which might explain their behavior such as secretly recording meetings or using look-alike doubles during public appearances to avoid assassination. 
Another example would be the stereotypical jealous husband who constantly accuses his wife of cheating. People with borderline personality disorder are very temperamental and have drastic mood swings. They have poor impulse control, which often leads to substance abuse. They may consider suicide or self-mutilation during emotional outbursts and then seem totally fine just a few minutes later. Some people think of borderline personality as a less extreme version of bipolar disorder. These patients often display the splitting defense mechanism where they think people are all good or all bad. They will say you're the best doctor in the world while your nurse is completely incompetent or vice versa. Examples include the stereotypical teenage drama queen and the Hulk because out of nowhere he gets pissed off about something and then ends up destroying a city because of it. People with histrionic personality disorder are childish prima donnas that are overly theatrical or dramatic. These patients are usually very colorful, extroverted, and flirtatious. They always need to be the center of attention and are willing to act impulsively or in a sexually inappropriate manner to get that attention. They are very concerned with how they look and often display the defense mechanism of regression. Examples include Madonna, Paris Hilton, and most reality TV stars. People with antisocial personality disorder are basically psychopaths. They are predators that exploit others without feeling any guilt. These patients are exploitive, deceitful, good at reading social cues, and often appear charming to others. They have a disregard for others' well-being and frequently violate the rights of others. These individuals often have a history of committing crimes. Now, when most non-medical people use the term antisocial, they are using an adjective that does not have the same meaning as antisocial personality disorder. Usually, people use the adjective antisocial to describe somebody who is avoiding social situations, which is much closer to schizoid personality disorder. So don't get that confused with antisocial personality disorder. Examples of antisocial personality disorder are serial killers, the Joker, and the Grinch. Individuals who have the symptoms of antisocial personality disorder but are under the age of 18 are classified as having conduct disorder. This is a precursor that usually progresses to antisocial personality once they turn 18. People with narcissistic personality disorder are vain and egotistical. They have a sense of entitlement and an inflated, grandiose self-image. Narcissists require recognition of their success and lack empathy or patience for others. They are preoccupied with power and prestige. Often these individuals exploit others. However, this exploitation is for status or recognition, unlike antisocial people who exploit others for material gain or just because they enjoy it. Examples include Gregory House, M.D., Walter White from Breaking Bad, and Stephen Colbert, the character, not the actual actor. People with avoidant personality disorder want to have friends, but are usually socially isolated because they are insecure, scared of rejection, and overly sensitive to negative criticism. They are painfully shy with feelings of inadequacy. These people wish they had friends, but don't because of how shy they are. Don't confuse this with schizoid, schizotypal, or paranoid people who don't have friends because they don't want friends. You should also make sure you don't confuse avoidant with narcissistic people who often don't have friends because they are jerks. Examples of avoidant personality disorder include Michael Jackson, who would do things like build tunnels or his own theme park so he could avoid people, as well as Heisman Trophy winner Ricky Williams, who once gave an interview with his helmet still on because he felt inadequate when interacting with the media. People with dependent personality disorder have very low self-esteem, which leads them to be very reliant on others. The person they are reliant on can be a significant other, a partner, or even their physician. These patients feel like they need to be taken care of and are afraid of being abandoned. They are willing to surrender even very important responsibilities like making medical decisions. They generally agree with whatever their caretaker says. They are clingy and often display the regression ego defense. Examples include Buster from Arrested Development and people who stay in an abusive relationship simply because they don't think they can function on their own. People with obsessive compulsive personality disorder are extreme perfectionists to the point that it can hinder their ability to complete tasks. Organization, lists, schedules, and small details are valued by people with this disorder. 
They are overly devoted to their work and rarely take leisure time. They become upset if they cannot control the environment they are in and the people around them. People with OCPD have interpersonal problems but can have academic and occupational success in the right setting. An example would be Steve Jobs. His attention to detail was a big part of his success, but he was also notoriously difficult to work for because he insisted on controlling everything and cared a lot about seemingly unimportant things. Obsessive compulsive personality disorder should not be confused with the anxiety disorder, obsessive compulsive disorder, or OCD. The two are distinct conditions even though there is some overlap and the names are very similar. OCD patients have insight, while people with OCPD do not. In OCD, they view their thoughts as abnormal, unwanted, and distressing. In OCPD, they view their way of thinking as normal and beneficial. A person with OCPD may seek out help from a healthcare professional due to interpersonal problems, but not about their way of thinking or acting because they don't realize they have a problem. People with OCPD also lack repetitive actions like washing their hands over and over again that are classically seen in OCD. That brings us to the end of this video. If you found it useful and you would like to help me out, you could pass this on to your friends via posting a link in Facebook or any other social media or just telling them directly. The next video in the psychiatry section is going to cover alcohol and drug intoxication and withdrawal. If you'd like to see that video, you can click on this black box here to be taken directly to it.